come this side. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what is happening in Nairobi, particularly the evictions, is, is a violation of human rights. What is happening in, uh, in Nairobi in the middle of a pandemic is actually an international crime. Yeah. It's an international crime yes. because those people are staying out in the cold. Those people are mixing with people who they don't know whether they're infected. Mr. Speaker, something is wrong with this government. God needs to find something about this government. There is something wrong about the way they treat uh, human beings. As if this government was elected by cows and goats. Mr. Speaker, and the complaints, majority of the complaints, when I sit on this side, Mr. Speaker, I wish I was in government because the majority of the complaints are from the side where they're in government. People seated on this side, I wonder, what are we supposed to do when the majority of the people order, order, issuing Speaker. complaints are sitting on the majority what side? What is the point of order, Senator? Mr. Speaker, Sakaji. apart from uh, the point of order on relevance, because I'm talking about people who are homeless, every senator in this house, whether in the government side, in fact, there's no government side, majority or minority, are supposed to oversight government. So I don't know why the members in the minority are uh, cheering when they see that even as we are oversighting and nobody complains. This is not a house of complaints. It's a house of oversight. Whether you're in Jubilee or NASA, let's oversight government. The, 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 the members... The members what, what is your point of order? But let's not lose focus of... Uh, okay. Mr. Speaker, I have said over and over again, as the majority leader, this house is called Senate. It is not the government of President Uru Kenyatta, and it's not executive. Mr. Speaker, the Senate all over the world, and Parliament all over the world, whether you are elected from the party that formed the executive or not, your responsibility is to oversight the executive. There might be cases where all of us, there will be no minority in many, let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, in many counties, including mine, there is no minority side. Do you want to tell me that then there will be no oversight of the county uh, governments in, in, in Elgeo Marakwet County because everybody was elected in Jubilee? Please give us a break. We are parliament. Everybody here has a responsibility to come and defend, Mr. Speaker, the rights of the people because our responsibility is parliament, it's not executive. Proceed, Senator Mutula. I, you know, the statements I'm making are bitter, but I have to make them for them to understand that, Mr. Speaker, that there is a reason why we are a minority and there's a reason why there's majority. Mr. Speaker, that said, there's no difference between what happened in El Geo Marakwet where people were abandoned after the mudslide. There's no difference about what happened in Solai when people died. There's no difference about what's happening in Nairobi. All of it is the same, the same line. A government that does not value human beings. It doesn't give. I've provided power to them is power. Power is sweet. It's sweeter when it's concentrated. Power corrupts. Power has corrupted. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, other, the, I agree with Senator Munkerman on the, on the point that we cannot wait for a week. Children are hungry. It's possible that nobody is going to offer any of these landless people accommodation. It's, a, it's sad. Why could somebody wait? for another day to, to do this. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, the answer must come immediately. There's nothing that prevents the Senate committee from getting PPEs tomorrow, masks, and go to carry your bank. We, if we are serious about these things, we must be seen where these things are happening. Let's go and find out where the people who have been evicted, together with Senator Sakaja, where did they sleep yesterday? Where are they sleeping today? Where are they getting food? Where are the children going for their most simple, basic human dignity? To the sanitation or toilet. But lastly, Mr. Speaker. Order Senator Ledama, relax. <laughs> yes, proceed. Recently, I mentioned the book of Revelations, and Senator Ochilo Oyako told us about where this book was written. When finally, Judgment is written about this government. I'm telling you, only the book of Revelations is going to tell you there will be gnashing of teeth. There will be a bottomless pit for members of this government. Thank you. Senator Ledama.
Mr. Then Speaker, sir, I am ashamed to be in this house during this period. We are completely failing. Human beings are being terrorized, stigmatized. Mr. Speaker, sir, even during the holy month of Ramadan, I'm not a Muslim, but I sympathize with the people who are evicted. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is about time that we say no to the executive. I'm completely against the militarization of this county called Nairobi. What is happening is against the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 187 of the Constitution is very clear. It is very clear on the issue of transfer of functions. And I'm so glad that even today we suspended the de debate on CARA. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, whatever is driving this move of demolition of houses, which I can only sum as commodity interest versus in community interest, must come to an end. Mr. Speaker, sir, this Senate must come out very clear and tell the executive that what you're doing is evil. It is completely an abominable. These people who live in Nairobi during this period of corona, when some of us, Mr. Speaker, sir, on a daily basis, when you look at our phones, it is empty. Because the, the amount of money you load and you send it to the village, what about now the people who live here, Mr. Speaker, sir? Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to request that the committee, and not only the committee, the entire Senate, hey. and must actually come out Order, and Senator call. Mahala, observe the social distancing, please. Okay. Mr. Speaker, sir, they must call this government. And whatever interest, whatever drive is moving these people to a, a beast, the human rights of these individuals who live in this county must come to an end. Mr. Speaker, sir, what I would request each and every senator tomorrow, let us go there, let us stand with those Kenyans. They need us now. All these commodity interests will mean nothing during this corona, uh, coronavirus period. Let us respect human, you know, the human beings. Senator Abshiro. I'll, I'll come back. I've noted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to belabor this, but the gross violation of rights of the people, the most vulnerable in our society at a time, cannot be gainsaid. But one of the things that I have observed is the fact that there's no consequence to violations of rights in this country. I think even if we go, we might be seen to, to have reacted to it, but for as long as those people go and, and uh, you know, and account, without accounting for the, for the things they've done, the duty bearer for this is the government, the duty bearer for this is the executive, but no, be it Solai, be it other gross violations, we've not seen consequences. So how different is this going to be even if we all go there? So for me, what I think is this, Senator Sakaja, and congratulations for bringing it, we have a thematic area under social justice and human rights, even in the, in the COVID committee. And because these people have been exposed to the COVID committee as well, perhaps we could join hands with the, with, with the committee of lands where I sit and make sure that we bring the people to book and hold government accountable. Mr. Speaker, the issue is that there's never a consequence. When is there going, is, when, when is this house going to achieve a situation where gross violations of our constitution and the rights of our people actually get a consequence for the perpetrators of this? We're looking like we just want to go there, but let's see what action would ensure that people pay for these violations. Thank you, Senator Mr. Maura. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> since people started wearing masks, and uh, I think they are speaking from both ends of the mouth because some sound must come from somewhere. Because, I mean, who is speaking here, really? You know, who is speaking here? Because by the end of the day, uh, we are living in very interesting times. The moment COVID came, and there is no official opposition, then you are hearing what Mao Zedong calls contradiction in the womb of the people. And the people around here are the ones who are complaining. So I think we must also legislate, maybe in the future, that you should always have an official opposition so that government must not speak you know, against itself. Mr. Speaker. What's your point of order, Senator you Orengo? Know, you know, Mr. Speaker. Oh, order, order. Oh, on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, the Senator for 
uh, Senator Maura cannot get away with this. He's in, living in an age which is gone. The official opposition existed at a time when we had a parliamentary system. We are now have a presidential system where the Senate as a chamber is a distinct organ of government. So the minority and the majority are supposed to put the government of the day in check. The executive is not in this house. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, in fact, Senator Maura once used to belong, when we had a parliamentary system, used to associate with the official opposition. But when we came to the presidential system, he, for very good reasons, left the party that he used to support, and I agreed with him because there was no longer an official opposition, there was only a minority and a majority and no executive in the chamber. So is he right to say there's no official opposition when I know he has been serving that role quite well when the issues with Kiambu came here? Just he took a stand. Absolutely. He took a very strong stand and he was being cheered out in the streets there. I saw Senator Wara for the first time being carried shoulder high. I tell you. And he seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> I've never seen him dance, but I saw him dance in front of parliament. I tell you. And uh, continue doing that because you are part of the organ for oversight and putting the executive to book. Senator Maura, <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, uh, my senior and elder, uh, Senator James Orengo, who I have admired since my childhood, has actually elucidated very well the role that we are supposed to play as a, as a, as a parliament. But you see, if you look at uh, Socrates, uh, when he was criticizing, uh, you know, Plato, in terms of the, uh, in his republic, he talks about the rule of law that is, uh, you know, executed by the elite as just the justice of a band of robbers. And that is what we are seeing here in Karyobangi. Because if the rule of law requires that you should execute property and, and secure them and the contract. Whose property is this that is being uh, you know, secured during a global pandemic, Mr. Speaker? Where is the security of the person that you fear not to be killed when you are walking in the streets of Nairobi? But, you know, the other day we had uh, 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 Governor Sonko saying he didn't know what he signed. I think I saw Senator Sakaja there also. So I really, I'm also surprised in fact, Mr. Speaker, when you are directing where this uh, 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 statement should go, it should not go to COVID-19 because it's gone back to Sakaja. Senator Sakaja. Because by the end of the day, we must also know what you are supposed to be. You made your bed, sleep on it. What's your point of order, Senator Sakaja? Mr. Speaker, it seems as if a certain spirit, I'm not sure if it's holy, has descended upon uh, Maura, Senator Maura. But Mr. Speaker, for the record of the House, which is this place where he says, he saw me. I have not attended any signing or any transfer unless uh, he thinks I look like someone. But Mr. Speaker, in fact, uh, one member currently in the house is better place to say who was in that function. But Mr. Speaker, I was not there. Um, my sentiments on the transfer we made in this house, and I still stand by those sentiments. But we're talking about the people of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, may I substantiate or withdraw that uh, allegation? I think let us make progress. Senator Professor Ongeri. Mr. Speaker, the reason I'm saying that is because for the record of this House, if what he's saying, which is not factually true, stays on the record, 10, 20, 30 years from now, somebody will assume that what is, he has said, which is manifestly wrong, is actually what happened, which is not true, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Senator Maura, you want to clarify whether you are sure of what you are saying or with the draw? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I'm very sure that uh, Senator Sakaja supports the best interests of Nairobi County. And I stand with him in ensuring that uh, if we as a house, that uh, we stand with the people of Karyubangi and we must defend them. To the extent that uh, maybe a caricature of himself may have appeared to have been in the signing ceremony, no, I no, stand no. guided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a very straightforward question. 
are you sure that you saw him or you were not sure so that you withdraw and we make progress? It's as simple as that. Mr. Speaker, you were present in the signing ceremony, so I stand guided by who was actually present. I, I, as far as I know, he was not there, if that is what you want me to say. So I stand guided, Mr. Speaker. With the draw. Speaker, I have not asked him to be guided. Yeah, Whether with the draw. Or substantiate. You don't yeah. just, this is not real market. Yeah. You, you come and say matters of fact. Statements Senator Mahora, can you either substantiate or withdraw? Mr. Speaker, may Senator Kaja not lose his cool. He's known to be a sober debater. And to the extent that, uh, Mr. Speaker, you have confirmed he was not there, I withdraw and support him in Karibangi South and tell him to remain sober.